Hey everybody, this is Kevin from Fort Orange Woodworking. And today's video should be a pretty fun one because I went ahead and I took a hundred bucks and I wanna see how far I can stretch it buying stuff for woodworking only off of Amazon. Now, we all know that woodworking can be a pretty expensive hobby. Um, and that also, there's just a lot of stuff out there to choose from. Some of it good, some of it not so good. So I went ahead, spent a hundred bucks about here or there and um, got a bunch of stuff that I thought would be useful in the shop. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my results with you and I hope you enjoy the video. Check it out. Okay, so the first thing on our list is this marking knife from Clark Brothers. This cost me $21.70, came in its packaging. It's got what I believe to be a rosewood handle. Might not be, um, but it is solid wood and it is a marking knife. It comes with this cool little leather sheath to protect your hands and fingers. It is double beveled, so it's got two sides for marking. And what's nice about a marking knife is sometimes a pencil will do the job when you're measuring. However, there are times where you want to get a nice uh, clean starting mark for your cut so that it can make crisper lines with your saw blades and that is exactly what a marking knife is for. It's used for measuring and pre-cutting lines that are about to be sawed. So this one feels pretty good in the hand, feels pretty stiff and, and stable just like you want it to be. You don't want it to be loose and floppy and like I said it comes with this cool little leather sheath and sheath and uh, this is a, a, a neat, honestly, I don't use marking knives up to this point. However, uh, the, the deeper I get into woodworking, the more I feel like this would be useful. So I definitely started using it instead of the pencil and I really like it. This one's a cool one from Clark Brothers, $21.70 on Amazon. Next thing on the list is this Yakima's self-centering doweling jig, which is uh, a company that I've never heard of, Yakima's. But inside the packaging, what we've got is this self-centering doweling jig that it comes with its own bearing points. And it's got three screw-in dowel, uh, I don't know what you wanna call these, filters? They're not filters, uh, attachments. Dowel, let's call them dowel attachments for different sized drill bits so that you can find the center of a point and then drive your dowel straight through it. Now, here's how something like this would work. Because it's self-centering, you put this on your piece of stock, turn it until it stops, and then you can slide it up and down and you can find your doweling points either with your drill press or your um, cordless drill. Change them out, get a different size. Now, another neat feature about this is that it can double as a center finding jig. I mean, it doesn't double as that, that's what it is. But you can also use this with a pencil and make a mark on the center and find the center of any piece of stock. Of course, your pencil needs to be the same size as your dowel attachment, otherwise you're gonna be off a little bit. But, neat little contraption, especially if you're making dowels that need to be straight and aligned. This one's from Yakima's, $12.99 on Amazon. Next up on the list is this four piece silicone brush kit from the Silly Company, that is what they are called. It is, the, it is the Silly brand. Nothing funny about it. Honestly, I do have a couple of these tools already. I've got, I've got these brushes in my kit already and they are really, really useful for, for glue ups and anytime you're gluing, um, these are my go-to for spreading glue. I know that other people have different uh, methods for spilling, uh, bleh, spreading glue. Some just use their finger, some use a roller. I like to use these silicone brushes because the next day when you come back, you get to do that really fun thing where you peel the glue off and it comes off in one chunk and it is super satisfying. And that's one of my favorite things about silicone brushes and glue. So you get the regular size one inch brush, then you've got a second brush with the smaller top. They both come with scraper ends. 
Also, with this kit, you get a larger glue spreader for larger pieces of stock, as well as a silicone soft scraper. Um, I don't know what difference that would serve compared to this, but whatever. This one's a little bigger, all right? So maybe get it in the corners a little better, but this is a neat little addition. And finally, it comes with this silicone uh, glue tray, which is gonna be handy because for, for dipping, because I tend to spill my glue a lot, I'm gonna be using this tray quite a bit. And then again, at the end, I'm gonna have that really satisfying thing where I get to peel this whole thing off, play with it for a few seconds, and then throw it in the trash. So again, this is the Silly Brand four-piece silicone glue brush kit from uh, the Silly Company. And this one goes for $15.99. Next up on the list is this digital angle ruler from a company called Gem Red. Never heard of Gem Red, but they make this digital angle ruler. And if you have ever had to work with difficult measurements, you know, odd shapes, different bends, things like that. Um, one of my previous videos, I made a, a giraffe bookcase that um, had just bend after bend after bend uh, in, in angles to form the shape of gira uh, giraffe. And I actually got down on my hands and knees on my, on my basement floor and uh, drew this thing out life size and then took a protractor and extended the lines and measured it was awful. So this would have been really helpful, this digital angle finder from Gemred. Turn it on. You can zero it. So if you find a perfect 90, you can zero it from your perfect 90 if you've got a set of machine squares laying around. And then um, once you zero it, you can mark it up against whatever angle it is that you are measuring. You can also lock it nice and tight so that this doesn't move. And extend it all the way out to 180 and beyond which is a nice feature compared to a standard protractor is you got to do a little bit of math sometimes with small angles compared to large angles. This one does them all, gives you an accurate, accurate measurement, comes with a battery, and is a useful measuring tool for anyone that has to work with angles. And again, this is from Gemred, cost $21.99 on Amazon. This next one is a tool that I already own use all the time, but this one happens to be from a company that I've never heard of, but figured I would give them a shot. Got good reviews on Amazon. This is the Carrier Company or Curier. I'm not really sure how that's pronounced, but that is the name of their company right there. And this is a five and a half inch folding saw. If you don't have a folding saw in your woodworking arsenal at this point, you need to get one. This one comes in this cool little velvet pouch and it folds up neatly, locks like this for use, and it is double-sided. So it's got a rough side as well as a fine side. Um, it is coated with just some sort of black factory paint, which I'm sure is gonna wear off at some point. I don't know about the longevity of this thing, but I do know that for, for practicality, this thing's pretty cool because it does fold up and store away neatly and conveniently, and I like that. You can, you can hang it up, leave it nearby. Like I said, I have used folding saws in the past. I've got a couple that I already um, go to very often. This is a Japanese razor saw that is full-sized. Um, also got this one off of Amazon for a couple years ago. It has a changeable blade, which can also be bent to different angles. And I've got a smaller version of the same Japanese type flush saw. I use this one all the time. This one is made by the, I believe, Shuizan Company from Japan. It's got a hardwood side and a softwood side. Has a little bit of flex to it, so it gets in nice and tight against flushed areas. Now what I tend to use flush saws for most often is not regular sawing work, like cutting boards in half, stuff like that, but I tend to use these most with things like cutting things down to size, making them smaller, uh, cutting doweling pins. I'll do that a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how easily this Carrier saw can cut through a doweling pin, which would for me be one of its primary functions. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this down. Get to one side. So far so good, nice and smooth. 
come in from the other side. And there you go. Cut that dowel pin like it's supposed to. Not super smooth, but that's what sanding is for, honestly. This definitely did its job. Not bad. This one, $19.99 on Amazon. Now, if you were to buy those previous five tools, that would run $92.66. That's That was the total that I got on uh, my Amazon bill. It was $92.66 for those five items. However, um, since we got a little bit of money to spare, I also wanted to throw out, this is one that I bought some time ago. I didn't buy it in this round of Amazon purchases, um, but this digital caliper, um, has been really, really useful to me. Uh, I bought this some time ago. It's got a zeroing button. You can change it from metric to imperial into inches. And I use this all the time, uh, mostly because I do a lot of work with uh, pallets and I like to get my pallet stock uniform thicknesses before I use it. But really that should be the case with any type of woodworking you do. If, you, if you're working with uniform thicknesses, you want to be able to measure them with accuracy. So I my go-to is this set of digital calipers. I go to this more often when I am measuring thicknesses than my tape measure almost all the time. These are pretty these are pretty accurate, even the cheap ones. This one I think I got for nine bucks. Um, and I don't know what the company of it was. However, you can get them as low as eight. You can get them uh, and, and up, but I, I usually see them somewhere between the $9 and the $15, $16 range. Um, so if you want to splurge a little bit, if you were to add this on, your tool total would now be right around $101.66. I guess that's not around. I guess that's pretty specific. So $101.66. You heard a little giggle from my shop assistant on the other side of the camera there. And uh, that would take you just over your $100 total. And there you have it, $100 spent on Amazon. I think that I'm gonna get a lot of use out of most of these tools. If um, some of them don't pan out to be as great as I expect them to be, I will let you know in the comment section. If you have anything to add, please feel free to do so yourself. I would also like to hear what kind of budget tools have you found off of Amazon or other uh, maybe internet sources that, that you have found to be extremely useful without really breaking the bank. I'd love to hear from you. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will see you next time in the shop. Thanks, everyone. Take care.